Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag, where I open my mail that people just randomly send me. Why? I don't know. They just send me stuff. So let's get straight to it. This one comes from Chris Matthews from Chris Matthews Photography in the UK. Thank you very much, Chris. So let's up uh, Leeds in the UK, by the way. So hi to all my viewers in Leeds. Uh, yes, I have been to Leeds. Didn't spend long there. I think I drove through or something. I just stopped for lunch or something like that. I can't quite remember. Um, let's open this damn thing. And yes, I know I'm cutting towards myself, but I'm Australian. I know what I'm doing. It's all right. Thank you for all the concern about my safety, though. But um, yeah, anyway, let's have a look. Um, the description on the box was scrap electronics. So here we go. Let's see what Chris has sent in. Oh, OK. Hit myself in the jaw there. Bloody bubble wrap's dangerous. This is rather interesting. We've got a note. Check it out. It is a wind view. It looks like. What? It's some uh, from an AV receiver, like a like a audio, v, uh, like a stereo system. Sang wind view UF Sangyong Co. Limited. I don't know. Two minute tear down. So as it turns out, I was completely uh, confused by what this thing actually is. Uh, it's obviously like a vacuum fluorescent uh, display in there, and there's that um, scene one too many hours of operation, I think, perhaps. But uh, what this is, is it's a like a, uh, a game counter. It's a Japanese, uh, for Japanese pachinko, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, pinball machines. And it's something that actually goes up on the, it's not from the machine itself, but apparently it goes up on the wall in the gaming, you know, I don't know, the pub or wherever they've got these pinball machines. And it, uh, it has like total stats and payouts and things like that. So it's, you know, some sort of like gaming type uh, system and jackpot lights uh, flash. That's what these are. These would be like jackpot, jackpot, you know, you've won something. Um, so, you know, I guess it's a battle counter. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Japanese pubs, maybe. I don't know. Has anyone been to one? So that's what this thing is for. So that's um, that's a first. It's rather interesting. So is the plug. Um, yeah, you would think that's one of those uh, weird-ass uh, Yankee um, 120 volt plugs, but it's actually uh, 24 volts AC, and why it has, look, a snipped off ground wire coming out of an earth wire, so that obviously doesn't make any sense if it's a, uh, you know, for mains use, but obviously they're using it for 24 volts AC, they're tapping off, it's obviously hooked onto one of these terminals, most likely this one here, and then they ground it off to the uh, chassis somewhere, and when this thing's been uh, decommissioned, they've just uh, snipped it off, but yeah, pff, that's interesting. But check it out, that's actually a lot of VFD segments. Look at this, they've got all these, are they like individual seven segments down there as well, right across the top, all here. We've got bar graphs, and then we've got this dot matrix display, I don't know, can you count those? But all up, that is a hell of a lot of, uh, you know, vacuum fluorescent segments. Unbelievable. I've popped the top off, we'll take a look at the VFD in a second up uh, closer, but... I just wanted to show you this interesting, this uh, LED PCB here, right, which has the, that it goes over there like that, which is the, you know, jackpot flashing LED thing, right? And look at the different colored on the solder mask there. It's white, but where it's actually covered by the pattern, by the actual uh, plastic on here, look at that. So... That has got to be, um, well, my guess would be uh, UV exposure has caused this board to change colour. Where it's obviously, this is the original white in here, because this is where the external light was blocked out by this uh, plastic here. And uh, the rest of it is UV, oh, some sort of, U oh, I'm pretty sure UV has come through and it's discoloured the board. It's very, very interesting. Maybe combined with uh, heat of the light flashing or something like that, perhaps. But that's really interesting. And there you go. For all you VFD aficionados, check that out. That's fantastic. Little dot matrix thing and all the... You notice how it's all sort of discoloured, um, which is rather interesting. 
I mean, obviously there, uh, something has gone pretty horribly wrong with those things through use. But, hmm, so you can probably see the ones that have worn out that have the most wear, actually. And we've got ourselves a switch mode supply in there, which uh, Chris says does uh, squeal. So, yeah, likely something wrong with that puppy. And here's the back of the LCD module, and of course you can hear it go... Ping! I love it. Not sure if you can hear that, if that's coming through well, but ah, oh, terrific stuff. Anyway, yeah, you shouldn't do that, by the way, with VFDs, but this one's um, basically a dead, so we can have our way with it. Uh, we've got an M16 uh, processor down there, sort of, yep, not uh, uh, to be, well, that's totally to be expected uh, from Japan, but um, not too many connections on the VFD display. We've got some here, some there, and that's about all she wrote. We've got an infrared... Uh, detector there. Actually, is there anything on the top side at all? Nope. And sorry, but I had to get medieval on its ass and uh, chop all the pins off. I couldn't be bothered desoldering it. It's no good, but hey, check out the pattern on the back. We can see how it's all multiplex. This is fantastic. Look at this. Sorry about uh, the, the reflections. This is all uh, glass, so it's sort of hard to uh, hard to get things really right, but geez, look at that. I mean, that's how they can get away with so few uh, pins on this thing. Everything's multiplexed. Ah, oh, it's a thing of beauty. Joy forever. Look at that. So thank you very much, Chris, for sending that one in. That is, uh, that is one fascinating beast. I'd love to see these puppies in action in Japan. And manufactured by Samsung. Thank you very much. Next up, one from William Fit Fight. I'll call you Bill. No worries, Bill. Thank you very much, mate. He's from uh, Utica in New York. Never heard of Utica. U-T-I-C-A. There you go. Google it. I don't my viewers in Utica. But I'm absolutely uh, butchering the pronunciation of as always. Anyway, it's from the United States of America. Let's have a look. We have a note. Ta-da! Oh, he's got a PhD. Beauty. Wonder what in. Doesn't say. Oh, we have things for the collection. Two things. You might recognize that. Aficionados might recognize this. Oh, hang on. Oh, and it's got the logo. It's got the famous logo. Look at that. Beautiful. None of this uh, key site bloody rubbish. Anyway, let's have a look. It's another HP 41CX. Beauty. And we also have this in a low pro case. Let's have a look. It is, ta da! A crusty old uh, Radio Shack sound level meter. <laughs> I, I had um, the older model of this, um, well, Tandy here in Australia it was. And actually, yeah, it was, yeah, it had the analog VU meter. Um, none of this digital LCD rubbish. No sirree, Bob. Um, and he, um, Bill says this was, um, sorry if you don't like being called Bill, but I'm going to call you Bill. Uh, if, the, um, yes, he used it to calibrate his home theatre system. It was a worthless, inaccurate piece of crap from the beginning. Um, yeah, these aren't, I don't think this was ever a particularly great model. It's exactly the same. The one I've got, I've probably still got it somewhere. I don't know if it works, but uh, it had exactly the same um, control on the thumb control on the side for the game, like uh, the, for the different ranges. And, uh, but this one is, looks like they just upgraded it to a, uh, a digital readout instead of the analog VU meter. And Bill sent in this gorgeous HP 41CX, and I've done a teardown of this on the uh, blog before, so I won't, uh, I won't subject this poor thing. It's got the uh, stat and financial uh, packs in there, and Bill said he uh, bought this in 1985 for 325 bucks, but he's not sure what he paid for the uh, stat packs and the financial packs. So yeah, that would have cost a pretty penny extra as well, but. <gasps> Oh, man, I so lusted after this back in the day. You see the full-page ads in the electronics magazines for this thing, and, oh, I thought it was just, you know, like, it was utopia. 
Let's rip apart this heap of crap. Here it is. Here's the different ranges. And as I said, my one had the VU meter. I think I may have actually taken it apart on the blog before, actually. So anyway, let's, uh, let's crack this puppy open and uh, see what's inside. It'll be all through hole like the old one was, I'm sure. It was a heap of heapo crap. Trademark. <laughs> Trademark Tandy Corp. Hmm. Come on, get out of there. And here we go. God. Yeah, there we go, all through hole, and hang on. Yep, smells very 1980s. There's a little PCB mount wafer switch on the board just held in with a self-tapper. You know, it, it does the business, nothing wrong with that. But there you go, you flip it out, there it is. Ah, oh, classic LM324, beautiful and all. Look at this, single-sided, couple of links in there. Oh, the PCB designer couldn't get it all on one side because that's the uh, the holy grail of single-sided layout. But, um, you know, that's not bad to get the wafer switch, everything else on there, single-sided, but that was very common for the day. Um, it's probably like the, exactly the same circuit they used in the old one or something, one with the analog VU meter, and they've just whacked in a uh, LCD module, that's it. Is that a date code? 43rd week 82? It had matched the smell anyway. Don't know about the uh, 66 on the end of it, but hmm. So thank you very much, Bill, for sending those in. Yeah, you wouldn't use one of these puppies these days. The digital ones you can buy on eBay for, I don't know, 20 or 30 bucks, can't you? You know, they're, they're really quite good. You know, more than uh, adequate for most purposes. And yeah, this thing was uh, was okay back in the day. It was probably the only, uh, was it the only affordable one? I don't know, because it was available from Tandy slash Radio Shack, I guess it was. Yeah, probably the only, uh, you know, audio level meter that Joe Average could get hold of. And although I didn't open this on camera, sorry, but I was too excited when I got it, I am the owner of original parts from the screen-used DeLorean, the hero car. Oh. Next up, another one from the old Dart. Um, yeah, I'm just going, I'm not doing these in chronological uh, order, like a uh, first in, uh, first out uh, buffer or anything like I'm doing, like getting rid of the big ones, because, yeah, it's, a, it's taking up space on the bloody bench again. Anyway, this one is from, um, I think it's Thatch. Thatch? Never heard of the name Thatch. Anyway, uh, Thatch Coltage uh, from the UK. Thank you very much, Thatch. I think it is, or it's, yeah, it's a, I think it's a T, or it's an R with a little squiggle on the top. Anyway, let's have a look. Come on. Sometimes it's tricky when they've got all this, uh, uh, masking tape on the outside. We have a note. So, let's have a look. Ta-da! Whoa! That looks like typewritten. Is it? Looks like it. Or that, or maybe it's come. Looks like it. Maybe it's come from a daisy wheel, perhaps. Hmm. Found this at the back of the cupboard in the company's IT office when they were having a clear out. All right. Let's have a look. Ah! For all you network aficionados, fluke networks thing. Definitely two minute teardown. We've had one before. It's the um. I still got it here somewhere. It's the yellow holster uh, one, but this one's different. Etherscope Network Assistant. Cool. Actually, it's pretty uh, last calibrated in July 10, so it's probably not that old. There you go. I'll show you the letter, and it's actually from uh, Emma. Is that, yeah, is that uh, like a daisy wheel printer, perhaps? Mm. Anyway, it's from Emma. It's not from Thatch. Um, <laughs> Oh, I think um, it's, I, I thought cottage, I think it's cottage, so that's, thatch, cottage, there you go, so that's the place, um, I guess, so there you go, thank you very much, Emma, we'll take a look. So let's have a quick look inside this Fluke Networks Etherscope Network Assistant, made in the United States of America, America. And that's exactly what you expect to find. There's big battery uh, contacts compartment uh, down the bottom here. There's a big uh, pulse transfer Ethernet uh, output transformer. They've got the uh, got some relays in there to switch it in and out. And it looks like there's a big ass uh, BGA, maybe an FPGA under there to actually do all the uh, networking testing and stuff like that. And it looks like we've got a 
media processor or something under there. Oh, oh it's an Intel something. Woohoo. We'll check it out. And some uh, memory that just handles the, uh, you know, the display, GUI, interface, all that sort of stuff. But all the networking uh, testing to be done inside that puppy. We'll have to flip the board open to find out what old school PCMCIA slot. Thank you very much. And because it ran a tad hot, I guess, um, I don't know, the FPGA's uh, pretty grunty. It's got a little fan on it for something this size, little uh, Sunon fan. Nice. And there's the LCD screen there, obviously uh, got its own controller, OPVI. Hmm, don't know that one. Anyway, yep, there it is. There's the, uh, it's, I don't know what the resolution of this thing is. It is rather high. You can see the uh, chip on flex down in there. There we go. So we've got hot bar attachments down here. Fluke are notoriously bad on their hot bar attachments. I've done a video on that. Anyway, a lot of Fluke products, these, they had their own hot bar uh, technique, although hot, nothing original about hot bar. I mean, but Fluke have their own um, in-house uh, thing and yeah, notoriously unreliable. Anyway, there's a little chippy under there. You can see the outline of that and that's uh, chip on flex. So they've got individual uh, column, they'd be column drivers. Yes, they would. That'd be column drivers down there. And there's your main board. Check it out. There's actually two uh, FPGAs on there. And the main one will go straight in. And we've got ourselves a Xilinx. What is it? It's hard for me to read the LCD here. I need to get a bigger um, LCD. If you're wondering why I can't read thing and you read stuff or I miss stuff and you can... At you know the viewer at home can uh, actually see stuff on your fantastic HD resolutions because I'm always looking through the camcorder screen here. So just stand in here. I can't. Uh... Anyway, it's an XC two V one thousand. There you go. You can go look that one up. And is this an FPGA or is that a uh, PLD? And that's got to be a CPLD. So it's just I don't know doing some uh, housekeeping stuff perhaps. Anyway, we have a high voltage uh, inverter for the uh, backlight here. That's what that is. No touchy when that's on. Uh, you'll get a bit of a jolt. And uh, oh, we've got an internal, uh, is that a backup battery or a super cap? Don't know. It is a super cap, 0.1 farad, is it? Yep. And uh, some nice little uh, separate uh, DC to DC converter modules here so they'd be for the various uh, rails for your uh, FPGAs perhaps so you know 1.2 volts 1.8 volts 2.5 volts 3.3 whatever so yeah nice you need a lot of them that's the problem with bloody FPGAs and other modern stuff really annoying and what's this down here Broadcom yeah that's our gigabit uh, transceiver so yeah you can go google that one look it up if you want looks like we've got a uh, is that a 32 kilohertz, no, 25 meg crystal, there we go. Um, so, yeah, it's basically exactly what you expect to find in sort of like a analyzer. A, so it's doing all the analysis uh, uh, stuff inside the, um, whatever it has to do. I don't know, I'm no expert, per I'm no expert network uh, person. So this is a, it's doing everything inside the uh, FPGA there. And as I said, that uh, processor, under there, it just handles the GUI. What is it? And you'll have to trust me, that's, uh, I got it on the uh, microscope. Had a look under the Mantis, and uh, it's a PXA255, uh, an Intel X scale uh, processor. So there you go. Thank you very much, Emma. This is uh, rather interesting. Exactly what you'd expect, though. There's, a, you know, a fair bit of hardware involved in this. I mean, check it out. You know, it, there's a lot of stuff in here for a handheld Ethernet analyzer. It's not just like, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the transformer whacked into, a, you know, straight into a micro or something like that. You know, there's going to be a lot of smarts happening inside the FPGA. That's really what you're paying for is all the testing algorithms and everything else that they're doing, you know, all the uh, secret source in, that they're doing inside the FPGA there. Um, why are they doing it in that and not the micro? Micro's not fast enough? I don't know. Networking, you have to uh, analyze it in real time, decode stuff in real time, I guess. So, yep. But yeah, there is an awful lot packed inside this thing and it's a really nice design. Check it out. It's just beautiful. Look at that. That'd probably be a six to eight layer uh, board, something like that, because it's gotta be to fan out all the, uh, all the BGA stuff but that is terrific
Thanks, Emma. Next up, we have one from someone you've probably heard of, Hackaday. So thank you very much, Hackaday slash uh, Supply Frame. Yeah, I already opened this one. Sometimes I don't know whether or not it's a mail. It's meant for the mailbag or it's meant for something else. But uh, they have sent in the new Hackaday Omnibus Volume 2. Check it out. I have no idea how you actually get this, but the first one was good. Um, and this is the second Omnibus. It's got tons of really cool, interesting articles, builds, hacks, all sorts of um, things in it. So check it out. I'll hopefully provide a link down below. And they also sent me something. Dave, the generous donation of your time and talent, what makes great things possible? Hackaday. Oh, Hackaday Prize Judge. So only if you're a judge do you get one of these. What is it? I don't know. Can anyone tell me? It's like moss or something, some sort of moss. I don't get the significance of that. But it's interesting. Thank you, Hackaday. So I'm actually rather impressed by this uh, Hackaday Omnibus. It's uh, it is very well produced, and uh, I this is the rare print edition, which you can get for uh, 17 bucks, and uh, some great articles and hacks, and it's just it's really well formatted and well produced. So yes, check it out. I'll provide a link down below. Oh yeah. Is there something growing in there? I don't know. How to get past Australian customs? Hmm. Don't try and smuggle stuff into Australia. Oh man, they're serious. I guarantee you, if you tried to bring this through customs, through the airport in Sydney, oh look, it's got wood, it's got wood, and it's got organic matter. It, trust me, uh, you would get the rubber glove treatment for an hour. Next up, another one from a, another company you should have heard of, Tektronix, because, yeah, I another one I opened because I didn't really uh, know if it was a mailbag or not. Anyway, if you didn't know, Tektronix, after, I don't know, well, no, not their entire history, because they have changed it before, but they have a new logo. Yes, new corporate banding. No, they have not changed the name, so that's excellent. Um, but they have this new TX thing, so they've changed the Tektronix logo. That's the short form version of it. No doubt they paid some consulting company a bazillion dollars to come up with new uh, branding that's compatible across all their social media channels and all that sort of wank. Um, so, yes, this is the just the TX uh, logo, but I think they've got this wrong. They sent me this logo, right, and it had like a blue stripe through the X on it. It does not have it on this shirt. So it seems like they got the logo on the shirt wrong. It's, well, it's different to what they, the branding they sent me. Anyway, they got the word Tektronix and then just the TX logo for, you know, little square icons and logos and things like that. Um, you've got to have different types of logos and stuff this day, these days, so thank you very much. Um, and apparently, um, oh yeah, here it is. Here we go. There we go. Ta-da! There we go. There's the new Tektronix logo. That's the full name version, and apparently um, this t-shirt actually contains a code. So there you go. Try and figure it out. Can you figure out what's on there? Apparently it does contain something. Anyway, thank you very much, Tektronix. Uh, yes, we have a refreshed new look and we're excited to show it off. I bet you are after spending all that money. It's been a long time, 24 years since they last changed it. I actually prefer the old school one with the uh, tube in it with the uh, CRT tube, that was, yeah, old school. And we think it's worth the wait, what do you think? Well, no, sorry, I didn't wait 24 years and go, yay, they got a new logo, like, no, sorry. I'd rather you actually have a new scope that's actually fast and responsive, that'd be nice. Um, in honor of our new brand launch, and because we appreciate your work as a blogger, you're among the first to receive anything, uh, free stuff, yes, thank you very much. Tektronics, there you go, check out the new, yes, there's a hidden message in the slashes at the bottom of the shirt. Figure it out, go on, post it, down below. Figure it out, sure you can. Collective nerd power. Next up, I'm gonna give this spot to one that weighs a fair bit, you know, it's punching above its weight in terms of uh, size and everything, and because it comes from Dirk winning, winning name, awesome, hashtag winning, good on you Dirk, um, and Third, he's from Deutschland. I don't want my German viewers. Everyone loves the pesky Germans. So, 
let's uh this is tricky should just slice the damn the whole thing open anyway let's see what Dirk has sent in Ta -da! yeah it's pretty unwieldy but it's fun Ugh, what's Dirk sent in all right hi Dave vintage Sony time yeah um, this one's from 1984 and 1985. He repaired uh, something back in 1991. Thank you very much, Dirk. And postcard. Don't have many postcards. There we go. Germany, Deutschland. Been there. Well, I haven't actually been to uh, Islingen M. M. Necker. Haven't been there. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but looks nice. Awesome. We have. Well, there's a CD in there as well. Ta-da! Oh, look at that. Wow, that's in great nick. That's a Sony CD compact disc. That is that the original model? The, yeah, the D50. I think it is the original model Sony Disman. Beauty. I actually wanted this puppy. I was uh, looking for it on eBay. And he's even included... Oh, no. I th thought it was an actual disc. It's not. It's just the... It's the original manual and everything. Wow. Wow, that's like, that's like a bought one. It really is. Thank you very much, Dirk. Serial number 66,758. I'm sorry, but this is more than a, worthy of more than two minute uh, teardown. I definitely wanted, um, I, I love doing the vintage teardowns and everyone seems to love them. So I'll do this one properly. I'll do it justice in a separate video. Thanks, Dirk. And I just wanted to show you that. Oh, look at it. It's just a beautiful nick, isn't it? It's the D50. There you go, their first Sony Discman. Well, as it was, they didn't actually call it the Discman. Well, was it the Discman? I mean, it's not written on it, but, uh, you know, that's whatever, because it came from the Walkman, of course. And uh, look, is that like the original, like, transport plastic disc in it? I mean, wow, it's an awesome nick. So thank you very much, Dirk. That'll definitely get its own teardown video. Oh, can't wait. Next up, one from Australia. Thank you very much, Mr. Gulagum. And you may have heard of uh, Gulagum before. They've had several sucks of the sav on the blog. And, um, gee, uh, yeah, this is really maybe upside down technique. That's uh, That's got to do the business, surely. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, School of Gum have sent in various, uh, usually pick related, um, development boards and things like that. So, no doubt, it's another one like that. So all you development board aficionados will read the letter. But, uh, oh, no, no, hey, no, it's another two minute teardown. It's a D-Link um, switch, uh, D-Link modemy uh, uh, router thingamabob. Oh, no, he's included the Joey. Oh, it's the Joey display board. It's tiny because it's a little Joey. If you don't know, a Joey is a baby uh, kangaroo that lives in the mother's uh, mother kangaroo's pouch. There you go. So this is his new board. Let's take a squiz. It's got a, I think it's got a pick, a seven segment display on it. And oh, well, this Joey is not a baby uh, kangaroo. It's a baby koala. There it is. Oh, isn't it cute? Um, yes, a Joey is uh, the generic name for a baby marsupial. Although most people uh, use it, you know, when you say Joey, you're you know, probably thinking about a baby kangaroo because baby koalas, meh, you know. Anyway, um, here it is. Here is the Joey. It is, as it says, a numeric LED display board for the Raspberry Pi. There it is. There's the uh, header for it. Doesn't come with the pin. So how do you plug it in? So there you go. It's an I squared uh, C address. So you can just program. It's got a whole tech uh, chipset down in here. We'll take a quick squiz at and there it is. Thank you very much, uh, David, of course. Dave from Gulagum Electronics. And I'll link it in uh, down below. It was, the Joey was a successful, uh, successfully launched on Kickstarter Beauty. I think he's had a few successes on uh, Kickstarter, I think. So, yes, loyal uh, crowd there. So, if you need, uh, if you want a um, seven-segment, uh, four-digit seven-segment display for your Raspberry Pi, go for it.
And there we go, it uses a Holtec 16K33, that's uh, not actually a micro, that's a um, I squared C lead uh, driver. So yeah, exactly what you'd uh, expect to find in something like this. Holtec make uh, micros and a whole bunch of um, peripheral uh, type chips, exactly like this one. And this sorry excuse for a router was uh, supposed to be powered from uh, 5 volts apparently and uh, uh, Dave plugged in uh, 12 volts and yeah, the magic smoke escaped. Ah, uh, old school, check it out, look at that big ass Samsung <laughs> quad flat pack, wow, anyway, yeah, no BGA rubbish in this thing. Is that some sort of magic smoke escape port there? And, ta-da, this thing up here, look at that. Don't like the looks of that at all. I think that is the, uh, yep, that's a genuine blowhole right there. Wow, look at that. And this is a pretty piss poor design too, because, like, you know, here's our 5 volt input here. There's basically nothing. There's a couple of local regulators here, so they may have continued to work depending on you know, like their maximum input uh, threshold voltage, but obviously there's some 5 volt powered uh, stuff in here, and whammo, thank you very much. So thank you to everyone who sent something into today's mailbag. Sorry if I didn't get around to your one, I only uh, tore down a few of the big ones. So I'll get around to them eventually, there's quite a lot left there on the shelf, there's, I don't know, maybe 15 items or something like that. So if you like Mailbag, please give it a big thumbs up and all that sort of stuff. And as I've done an announcement video on, in case you didn't see it, um, there's an EEV blog newsletter. Go to eevblog.com and go to the newsletter link and sign up for that. Catch you next time.